Hi and welcome to the Emilio Exploring Channel. It's a little noisy out here, but we're going to check out the Keystone up in Bonnie Lake, which is a stone with some interesting stuff about it. So let's go look. So there's the entrance, and it's kind of windy still. There was a pretty big storm, and then in this park we got a playground, and then the rock over there. So they have a fence around it, and there's like a tree. I don't know if the tree recently fell. But it was really stormy last night. And then the sign says thousands of years ago, this large rock known as a glacial erratic was deposited by a retreating glacier during the last ice age. Its unusual size and unique location, which once commended expansive views of glaciers carved, glacier carved valley, an immense island lake, and towering mountains, they have influenced the Native Americans to utilize it. Let's go check, check it out, I guess. They found this while they were constructing these neighborhoods up here and then there's a little gate here you can see it was pretty stormy last night with stuff everywhere let's uh let's go inside wow so this rock is uh pretty large and you can see the little the little holes everywhere. I did read the little sign, but it says the keystone is a glacier that got put here. And it's 13, it got put here 13,000 years ago. And the stone's height are 4.5 by 12 feet. And it's pretty large and it's, kind of strange you can tell it's something it was used for something because it's kind of flat on top and it is kind of a strange rock so the stone has a lot of significance with the Puyallup tribe and it has 20 pits all over the top and the sides and it's connected to constellations like Polaris, Sirius, the Little Dipper, Orion and it even connects to uh, landmarks like Mount Rainier and some other mountains and whatnot. I uh, also believed it was used to tell when the seasons are going to change based off the constellations and the markings, which is kind of cool. So the stone is located about a mile from Natchez Trail and was apparently rediscovered when a suburban housing development, which is all these houses, um, in 1999 began development. And it's actually listed on the Washington State Office of Archaeology and Historic Preservation. I want to get a closer look at some of the pits, so I might hop up there and take a quick look. So I'm up on the rock. I don't see any signs to not get on. It seems pretty solid, so I'm going to hop up here and get some shots of the holes and stuff so let's take a look so there's quite a bit of moss on here currently but if you look there is a main spot here with these lines i don't know if the lines were here before or if they were placed there it's possible i'm only doing a hypothesis but mount rainier i believe has three runoff rivers if I remember correctly so this could be a representation of Mount Rainier but I am really not sure on that one it could just be cracks as well online it did also say that there's 20 pits which represent constellations there's some on the sides there we got some more here we got a pretty big one there for comparison and then actually one more thing the big one it's probably about 10 inches this direction and then over here this is a pretty large pocket as well it's maybe about six six inches and then we got this whole basin side right here I think most I'm gonna look on the sides because I feel like I saw a lot of significant stuff on the outside as well so hopefully the noise isn't too loud but something I do find interesting is these 
it's like a step, which can happen naturally in nature, but it seemed maybe like somebody chose this rock because it had some nice features, or it was actually carved out. Um, not really sure. This glacier has been here for over 10,000 years, so really anything's possible, but I feel like this is a very significant part of the rock. So something else I find very interesting about this rock is this bottom section down here, where possibly somebody could have you could have slept down here if it was windy or snowy. And also we don't know how much of this dirt was here before. So it could have been lower. And there might have been more space to maybe put a fire and stay warm and stuff like that. There's also a pretty big carved section right here where somebody carved a hole about this big. I'll get a shot of that in a second. And there's also a small one down there. So there's a lot of... Uh, markings right here and also the rock has a strange line so we'll take a look at that right now so we're in the kind of cave looking section on the back side and if you look right there you can see kind of a strange hole which actually has a shape to it and then right below it there is another like a dimple right there and then the rock is actually kind of coming off like a sheet right there there's actually a gap and this one especially because it has a shape like that almost like a almost like a seashell or like almost like a little paw or something not like a paw made the print but somebody carved it to look like a shape all just theories of course towards the front there's a lot of angles and there's also quite a bit of water coming out of this one spot and then as well here's another significant significant here's another important piece to look at it's almost like my hand look at that shape it's almost like a spiral that one's pretty interesting and we'll go up here there's another pretty large hole as well right here and then a crack which seems to be coming from the coming pretty close from the center back to the steps and as well here's some other rocks I'm curious if they're connected like if a, one of these formally was there but, like I said, this rock's been here a really long time, so it's kind of hard to know. And there's like a pretty large crack. Look at that. And it runs all the way to the center. Kind of where the water is in that little pond. Pretty interesting. I think some of the weird things that I'm noticing is uh, the water on the other side coming out. And this cave section. I really think these are interesting. And then the big... Um, the big hole in the middle with the cracks coming out of it. A lot of the pockets on the rock like this sync up with constellations and mountain ranges possibly and maybe even rivers who knows I guess anything's possible so as I was taking photos uh, I noticed the panel where I stood the light casted shadows on certain areas so I started to think maybe also these trees that are here, they look kind of like fast growing trees. I'm not really sure. Um, they could be slow growing trees, I don't really know, but maybe they were strategically placed in spots so they could see shade, the shadow, and it would hit the spots 
and it would allow you to read like what time of the year it is or what's going on in the stars and stuff like that. So that's just a theory. There is like a little trail over here. Let's go take a walk, see what else is over there, what kind of trees and if there's any more rocks. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool right before I get down is all these other rocks right there. I think I showed them earlier, but I don't know. I was looking on them a little bit and I didn't see any markings, but it definitely looks like it's part of this rock, like it was from this rock. You can definitely tell we had like a windstorm last night besides all the lights being off on my way here. I'm thinking getting home is going to be kind of difficult because all the lights are out but we'll walk to the end of this and see if there's anything at the end or if we see anything else in the woods. There's a little stream right there. That would be a good reason to use the stone also if there's like a good source of water. But then again, the uh, stone has been there for 10,000 years, so that's kind of strange. The rock seems to be kind of in a weird location. So as I'm walking, I was thinking about some of the pits. And I was starting to think maybe some of the water buildup was intentional. Like maybe they gouged out the, the holes big enough for water to get stuck in there. And then if you were to measure where the water comes out, maybe it if you follow the holes down, it can hit other stuff to tell you information. That's just a theory, because I noticed the water, almost some of the water was like leaking out of the rock, and then also, it looked like if it was raining, it would run in specific spots. Look at that. We got a little, we got a tree down. We got a widow maker out here. couple broken trees. Whew. Didn't really bring my hiking boots. Check this out, these trees here. You normally don't see those around here. I feel like you usually see those over by like Point Defiance, like on Ruston Way, and like other places. I forget what these are called, but definitely seen them on Five Mile Drive. In places by the uh, the sound, huh? There's actually more down there as well. They they might be madronas. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Here's some more of those trees. I find, I find that really weird that these are here. There's maybe about 20 of them. Oh, it keeps going. Huh? This trail's like. Okay, I hope I'm still on the trail, because now I'm just walking by people's houses and then I just popped up. I think I'm gonna have to walk back on the street back to the park. So I walked around on the street on 176. We keep going this way and we'll get back to the the spot with the two parking spots and the main park entrance. I'm back at the entrance to the park. I just realized that the houses up here must not have power because everybody's running generators. I thought they were pressure washing machines, but they're generators. Once I walked around a little more, I realized that I heard uh, more of the, the machine, the, the motors. So they must have lost power, but we're gonna head back over, finish out the video. Let's go. So that's about it here on the Emilio Exploring channel. I had a lot of fun looking at this very interesting rock and it was a bit noisy out, but it's okay, we had a lot of fun. Uh, hit that like button subscribe definitely check this place out. It's pretty neat It's just up here in Bonnie Lake and I'll see you guys next time on the Emilio Exploring channel Goodbye